agroindustry. To achieve this, we provide best facilities for our students. The Faculty of Agricultural Technology has 11 professors and 57 doctors. They have a great reputation due to their extraordinary achievements on the national and international levels. The far-reaching reputation of the Faculty of Agricultural Technology lecturers is evidenced by their frequent invites to speak and to offer their valuable input. They have been trusted as keynote speakers and consultants for both government and private institutions. They have been reviewers of nationally and internationally reputable journals, and they have also been keynote and invited speakers at national and international seminars and events. To grow the Faculty of Agricultural Technologies lecturers' knowledge, the faculty strongly supports research activities such as joint they research have been trusted and publications, as keynote speakers, and international conferences, for both postdocs, and further study at the University of Nottingham, Sheffield University in the UK, University of Western Australia, and Kyoto University in Japan. To attract students, the Faculty of Agricultural Technology promotes all of their study programs at several other universities at the national and international level. Teaching and learning activities are optimized using various innovative learning methods. Through the use of the integration system, Kapura Universitas Brawijaya, all information is easily accessible electronically by lecturers and students. To broaden students' international perspectives and give them international experience, the Faculty of Agricultural Technology gives lectures in the form of a three-in-one program activities, a visiting professor program, international classes, double degrees, student exchange, distance learning, short course programs, international conferences, and joint research projects. To improve Teaching student and learning activities and are optimized the using various of their innovative knowledge. learning methods. The Faculty of Agricultural Through the use of the integration system, brings Kapura in guest lecturers from industry and provides training and certifications. We continue to develop a high standard for research and education facilities as well as establish relationships with alumni, partners, and stakeholders. Our faculty and staff are also dedicated to bringing students a high quality education by providing state-of-the-art teaching and research. Through talking about and encouraging student participation in research and in community service with their lecturers, the Faculty of Agricultural Technology helps to improve the critical thinking, teamwork, and communication skills of their students. The Faculty of Agricultural Technology will always provide the best quality of education and commit to producing high quality graduates. With our motto, do the best towards perfection. The Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Brawijaya, is ready to strengthen the agricultural technology of Indonesia. Agricultural technology is a branch of science focusing on the processing of agricultural resources using modern technology for the improvement of human welfare. To accomplish this, the Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Brawijaya, was officially established in 1998. Faculty of Agricultural Technology is one of the largest faculties in the field of agricultural technology in East Java, Indonesia. With three departments and 11 study programs, we offer you a remarkable opportunity to feed the world and to help the community through food science and environmental related technology and engineering. Faculty of Agricultural Technology is the first faculty in Brawijaya University in one of out of 14 faculty nationally that is selected to build zone of integrity. The zone is corruption free and provides continuous excellent services. Being a well-known faculty in the field of agricultural technology at the international level and contributing the national development through the three pillars of higher education, 
is our vision. We are encouraged to conduct research and development in agricultural technology field and create collaboration with other parties in hands to progress of the world agro-industry. To achieve this, we provide best facilities for our students. The Faculty of Agricultural Technology has 11 professors and 57 doctors. They have a great reputation due to their extraordinary achievements on the national and international levels. The far-reaching reputation of the Faculty of Agricultural Technology lecturers is evidenced by their frequent invites to speak and to offer their valuable input. They have been trusted as keynote speakers and consultants for both government and private institutions. They have been reviewers of nationally and internationally reputable journals, and they have also been keynote and invited speakers at national and international seminars and events. Okay, to grow 3 the Faculty now. of Agricultural uh, maybe Technology must act, uh, we can stop the, the faculty video. strongly supports research activities, such as joint... Okay, MC, please, you can start. Thank you, Patimas. Thank you, Mr. Dimas. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are delighted to welcome you to the second Agricultural Engineering Lecture Series, Bioprocess Engineering with the theme, Advanced Clean Water Technology for Sustainable Production, Faculty of Agricultural Technology, 2021, Universitas Brawijaya, Malang, Indonesia. I would like to extend my gratitude to the Honorable Dean of the Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Professor Imam Santoso, Honorable Speakers for today's guest lecture, Dr. Abdul Salam Al Hadidi from Fuji Film Manufacturing Europe, the Netherlands, Dr. Yusuf Wipisono, Head of Bioprocess Engineering Study Program, Universitas Brawijaya, and to all participants to the second Agricultural Engineering Lecture Series. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yubi Fabiana Hartono, and I'm absolutely honored to serve as your Master of Ceremony in this special occasion, the second Agricultural Engineering Lecture Series, Bioprocess Engineering with the topic, Advanced Clean Water Technology for Sustainable Production. As of now, we already have about 300 participants in the Zoom room and also in the YouTube live streaming. Before we begin, let us express our gratitude to the God Almighty who has blessed us with health amidst this pandemic so that we may gather virtually in this event, hopefully without any obstacle. Ladies and gentlemen, before we head to our main event, let us start by praying so that this event can progress well without any hindrance. Let us pray based on our individual faith and beliefs. Prayer conclude. Before going into our main event, I will introduce you to the rundown of this event. Today's event will start with the opening ceremony, and then we will proceed to listen to opening remarks from the Dean of Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Brawijaya, Professor Imam Santoso. And the second agenda will be the main lecture from Dr. Yusuf Wibisono, the Head of Bioprocess Engineering Study Program of Universitas Brawijaya with the topic Osmotic Technology for Clean Water Production. After Dr. Wibisono's session, we will open for a question and answer session. And the third agenda will be the main lecture from Dr. Abdul Salam Al Hadidi from Fuji Film Manufacturing Europe, the Netherlands with the topic of falling countermeasures in reverse osmosis plan, silt density index. After the lecture conclude, we will open another question and answer session. Last but not least would be the closing ceremony. I would like to remind all participants to comply with the following rules. First, please register to the event with your real name and email and make sure that your Zoom is named with the format name underscore institution. And during guest lectures, participants should mute themselves and can unmute only when the host invite you to ask. Any questions to be asked could be asked via room Zoom chat, live YouTube 
live YouTube chat or can be addressed directly to the host. Attendance form and participants feedback form will be shared during the lecture. So without wasting any time, let's proceed with our first agenda today to hear opening remarks from the Dean of Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Brawijaya, Professor Imam Santoso. To Prof. Imam, time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Dr. Abdul Somad al Hadidi and Dr. Yusuf Ibisano and the other participants. We are delighted and honored to host uh, the seminar Advanced Clean Water Technology for Sustainable Production organized by Agricultural Engineering, the part of anniversary event of Faculty of Ag Agricultural Technology. We know that agriculture is an important sector in human life and determine human existence on the earth. Through farming, humans get raw material for their food, clothing, and shelter needs. Through farming, one of the most important aspects of agriculture is the availability of water for irrigation. This is what is often referred as the water, food, energy mixes. Many agricultural land have difficulty in obtaining a suitable water source for agriculture, either from groundwater, surface water, and wastewater. An advanced technology for producing clean and fresh water, which is ready to be used for irrigation, is desalination. Large scale desalination suitable for agriculture is generally achieved by thermal technology, distillation, osmosis-based technology using the first or forward osmosis or electrochemistry, electrodialysis. The processes imply membrane technology and be able to produce large amount of clean water efficiently and effectively. Various technological advancements were made to obtain a low cost and less energy desalination process. Providing the link between water, food, and energy is the Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Brawijaya Concept. The education and research are mainly focused on the development of technology to strengthen food, water, and energy security. This webinar event is being specially organized during the anniversary of Faculty of Agricultural Technology Universitas Brawijaya and serves as knowledge transfer for the nation. I will and I hope this seminar will highlight some sharing idea and discussion for collect many information and knowledge about advanced clean water technology for sustainable production. In closing, again, I wish to express my gratitude to the speakers and all participants for their full cooperation and contribution to the webinar. I take this opportunity to thank the organizer from Agricultural Engineering Department and especially study program on bioprocess engineering. I wish you a very fruitful and productive meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Imam, for the wonderful remarks. Before we going to main session, I would like to introduce the host today. This international guest lecture will be hosted by Mrs. Dina Wahyu Indriani. Mrs. Dina is a lecturer from Bioprocess Engineering Study Program. She graduated from Agricultural Engineering, Faculty of Agricultural Technology for her bachelor degree and her master degree from the Department of Chemical Engineering Chung Yuan University, Taiwan. And now she is a lecturer in Bioprocess Engineering, Universitas Brawijaya. So without further ado, I would like to give a very warm welcome to our host today, Mrs. Dina Wahyu Indriani. 
to Mrs. Gina, time is yours. Thank you very much for the time and introduce me at all. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Honorable Professor Imam Santoso, Dean of Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Brawijaya, the Honorable Dr. Yusuf Ibisono as Head of Bioprocess Engineering Study Program, and also as one of speaker today, the Honorable Dr. Abdul Salam Al Hadidi from Fuji Film Manufacturing Europe, the Netherlands, as guest lecturer today. And the Honorable a lecturer and participant who joined uh, today lecture, Advanced Clean Water Technology for Sustainable Production. Good afternoon in Indonesia and good morning in Netherlands. Before we start our guest lecture today, I would like to introduce our speaker. The first speaker, Dr. Yusuf Wibisono. He is head of Bioprocess Engineering Study Program, Faculty of Agricultural Technology, Universitas Brawijaya. His education background first, he got bachelor from Agricultural and Biosystem Engineering and a degree from Chemical and Materials Engineering, Chungyuan University, Taiwan. And for her, his doctor, doctoral degree, from Chemical and Process Engineering, Membrane Technology, University of Twente, the Netherlands. And for his publication uh, research, uh, his corpus index is H and Doctor, he has three intellectual property rights and his research uh, interest membrane technology for separation or purification and energy generation, water technology, drinking water technology, water and waste treatment, sustainable technology, fluid tenor as best researcher from Kurita Water and Environment Foundation in Japan in 2018. And now he becoming an assistant professor in bioprocess engineering, Universitas Brawijaya. Dr. Yusuf Ibisono also involved in education and research, mostly in membrane technology and processes, as well as development of biomaterials. So let's start our main event. Dr. Yusuf Ibisono, time is yours. Thank you, Abu Dina, for very nice and also extensive introduction. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm happy to be here, although we have to meet uh, online. Uh, I would like to share uh, our work uh, that we have been done so far in the University of Brawijaya. Uh, beforehand, I would like to share my presentation. Okay, first, uh, I have to thank also for uh, Dr. Abdul Salam Al Hadi to to joining this uh, uh, webinar. Hopefully, uh, we all have uh, gather information from Dr. Abdul Salam about the latest uh, development of the uh, RO uh, processes. So, my uh, talk today uh, will be about osmotic technology for clean water uh, production. Uh, I would like to start to talk about the sustainable uh, development goal. So as we know that this goal is already launched by United Nations since uh, 2015, and we have about uh, 17 goals. And this uh, SDGs is uh, very important to be considered for uh, any nations in the world to become an assistant goal for global development and also to overcome uh, major uh, world problems such as uh, food and then energy and also water. And uh, talk about water, actually uh, in SDGs, we have the uh, six uh, uh, goals. That is the clean water and sanitation that mostly uh, uh, talk about how to um, uh, to to make uh, the uh, clean water as uh, 
good uh, uh, good and also effective uh, way to to preserve the water but when we actually see to the another goals uh, we have about 11 goals others that also related to water for example zero hunger is uh, about how to provide food and of course with uh, food we have to use water to produce a uh, food crop for example also about this one uh, affordable and clean energy of course to uh, produce energy uh, and clean energy also we need water so okay I have to stop for a while because now <laughs> other in in my uh, place. Thank, sorry. Okay, we are waiting for a while. So, uh, because in Doctor Yusuf Ibisono, uh place still Azan. So I, I will uh, remind you, remind Dr. Yusuf Ibsono uh, for a presentation until uh, 20 minutes, uh, fifth, three, three, three and a half. Okay, I will continue. Uh, so the sustainable is very important and uh, mostly for water, uh, this is also quite important uh, substance that we have to peace preserve also. So talk about the water sustainability also we have what's so called a planetary boundary. So this actually the uh, biophysical substance system that are very important to be considered during development uh, in the world. So for example, we have here chemical pollution, climate change, ocean acidification, and then nitrogen cycle. And this one is very important, global freshwater use. So actually the planetary boundaries actually uh, talk about how the limit when we use the subsystem and uh, when uh, the subsystem is uh, across the limit, so we are in dangerous. So for example, this global freshwater use, the current status is about uh, the consumption that we uh, use water is about to uh, 160 uh, kilometer cubic per year, the consumption of freshwater by humans being. And the promise boundary is about 400 uh, kilometer cubic per year. So it means we have still, uh, yeah, a, a, a room to 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 achieve the the limit, but still, this this one will 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 uh, pass the limit. So we have to consider about this one during our development. Uh, also for agriculture, as uh, mentioned by the dean before, because we are in the faculty of agricultural technology as all producing uh, food. Uh, in this case, also very important. You can see here in the uh, in the schematic uh, illustration here actually uh, about seventy percent of water in the world is cons consumed by the uh, agriculture production in this case. So you, you can see in different regions from Europe, Northern America, Southern America, Asia also quite a lot, and also Africa and South Asia. So this one uh, the the portion of water consumption is very high in agriculture. And even in the future, the 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 agriculture uh, estimated to increase by further about uh, 19 percent uh, of the water consumption. So this is why also uh, uh, with regard to clean water, the agriculture is very important. That's why uh, why people talk about uh, water and food uh, nexus. It's very important to uh, maintain the water clean water to to produce the food crops. Okay, so now I will talk about the membrane technology uh, because uh, part of the water production is supported by membrane technology is an advanced technology to clean the water. Why we use membrane? Because membrane has uh, several advantages. For example, it's clean technology because we are not using uh, chemicals and then also saving energy. In this case, also uh, with regards to energy uh, and uh, water nexus. So we hope we using membrane, we have less energy to use. 
And then also membrane uh, able to replace other conventional processes such as uh, filtration, distillation, ion exchange, and also, also uh, other chemical treatment system. Uh, we can see here any type of membrane such as uh, microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and os reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis mainly produce uh, water, clean water. So this why is very important aspect also to use uh, RO uh, process to produce uh, the clean water. Uh, membrane also has drawback, is falling. I think uh, Dr. Abdusalam will talk a lot about the falling in the later uh, talk. So uh, about the osmotic technology, we have published our uh, uh, publication, our uh, article in uh, uh, already last year in one of the book uh, chapter. So in this case, we uh, talk about a forward osmosis uh, system, yeah, mostly how to use the forward osmosis and then combine with other uh, system to produce uh, clean water. We can talk about this one uh, in this uh, schematic of review of uh, our, uh, forward osmosis and then reverse osmosis and also uh, preserve related osmosis processes. So let's see, we talk uh, this compartment, uh, we put here two solution, uh, we can have draw solution and also fit solution and we put membrane uh, in, in uh, uh, and then in, in, in this case, of course, uh, the membrane is semi-permeable membrane means uh, part of the uh, part of the substance can uh, go pass through past the membrane, but uh, the other will retain. So in uh, forward osmosis process, the process is like this. So for example, we have here, let's say the draw solution is, um, for example, the saline water, and then this one, the fresh water. So in this case, when we use uh, the semi-permeable membrane, the uh, natural osmotic uh, process will occur. So in this case, uh, by, by the uh, osmotic pressure difference here, the water can go uh, pass through the membrane from the uh, dilute solution into the concentrate solution. So in this case, the concentrate solution will more dilute and uh, the other one, the uh, dilute solution will, will be more concentrating in this case. So we use this one, uh, this, this using uh, forward osmosis. For reverse osmosis, it's different way. In this case, we apply the pressure that should be higher than uh, osmotic pressure difference. So we put pressure here and we pressurize the concentrated solution. So the water will go pass through the membrane, go to the dilute solution in this case. Uh, and then we can produce uh, clean water. For pressure related osmosis is quite different because this uh, PRO process is mainly to produce the energy. So in this case, actually we apply also the pressure, but because the pressure is lower than uh, osmotic pressure different in this case. So the water will go to the uh, left uh, right compartment in this case. So when the pressure is higher here, we can use uh, this uh, pressure to move the turbine, for example, and the turbine will uh, will convert the energy into electricity, for example. So this uh, this also uh, potential um, uh, process that we can produce also energy. So that's why uh, uh, FO process RO and also PRO is we can use this the same the same uh, membrane in this case. Uh, here, the reverse osmosis membrane, you can see here, uh, for example, that uh, the one that used by Singapore, this picture I took from one of the seawater destination in Singapore, they use a spiral one membrane here, and they have a lot of uh, uh, membrane element here, so they produce uh, uh, clean water from uh, seawater, but of course, if I means when I mentioned before that uh, the falling also occur in reverse osmosis here, for example, the, the, the falling, you can have organic falling, colloidal falling, and also inorganic uh, scaling, for example, and also uh, bio falling uh, for RO process. And we can use actually the FO process to uh, use for another, uh, another process. For example, here, the, the, the natural uh, FO process, and we can combine with other process, for example, for uh, fertigation. Fertigation, fertigation means 
fertilizer and uh, irrigation. So we combine the forward osmosis process here. For example, we use uh, breakage water as draw solution, uh, sorry, as feed solution. And then here we use uh, fertilizer concentrated uh, draw solution. And then when this uh, two flow, uh, we use counter flow here, uh, input in the in the membrane module here, we are using forward osmosis membrane. So the water from breakage water will go through the membrane to the uh, concentrated fertilizer solution. And then the diluted fertilizer can be used directly for irrigation. So uh, this one also we can use for agriculture uh, to improve the, the production of crop. And next, uh, we can also use another combination of uh, technologies. For example, here we use FO-based fertigation combined with other technologies. Uh, in the lab, we uh, use uh, to uh, synthesize the FO membrane, but we are using green solvents. So uh, instead of using organic solvent that harmful for environment, we use green solvent. We use, for example, here siren as a green solvent. So we can produce the FO membrane here. And using FO membrane, we can combine with another system, for example, soil moisture sensor system here. And also, for example, pocket fertigation uh, technology. We can use this technology to uh, irrigate the, the crop. For example, here the crop, and then we put the uh, fertilizer here. Also, we put uh, the sensor system here. So when the plant need to be uh, water, we can uh, automatically uh, detect uh, using the soil moisture sensor system, and then the water will, will go goes through the the fertilizer, and the fertilizer with the water will goes to the uh, the the plant here. When the uh, soil saturated, so the system will stop. So there is no more water goes to the, the crop. So in this case, uh, we can combine FO fertigation system with uh, membrane. So we can have another aspect for uh, using water more sustainable. So we are not using water uh, extens ex extensively. In this case, we just use water, a uh, small amount of water with small um, small amount of fertilizer. So also very effective uh, to prevent any uh, eutrophication, for example, in the environment. So we can preserve also our environment. So. Another combination is combination uh, FO and also RO, for example, here. Okay, so again, I have to stop for a while, sorry. Dr. Yusuf Vibisono, you have uh, five minutes left. Thank you. This is my second final, uh, Mr. Dina, Mrs. Dina, so then I will continue. So combination of FO and RO, for example, here we have a FO system. We can use the water as draw solution and then the effluent with water as a fit solution. Of course, using FO, we can have the uh, water goes through the membrane here and then the seawater will become dilute here. When the seawater become dilute here, we can use as the fit of RO system. Why we use this one? Because when you use uh, dilute seawater, means the pressure that you use for RO is less, is lower. So in this case, the energy that you use also lower. Uh, so we you you can use lower energy, and then uh, when you pump the 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 dilute seawater, it can produce. Uh, uh, the clean water, yeah, clean water directly, you can drain this one. And then this one, uh, the error concentrate, we can use again as the resolution for the second of what osmosis system. And uh, we can use also the the fit a solution from concentrated with water here uh, in the second FO system. So in uh, in in the in the in the end, you have a dilute RO concentrate. This dilute RO concentrate, of course. Uh, when you have the arrow concentrate, normally people just inject in the well or just discharge in the uh, seawater. When the concentration is too higher, it will be harmful for environment. So when you use uh, dilute arrow concentrate, it will be less harmful for environment, of course. And uh, the wastewater also here you has a high highly concentrated wastewater effluent. So means also you can. Uh, 
proceed with uh, the next uh, process, for example, uh, uh, filter filter cake procession and etc. In this case, so this also the illustration that you can combine FO and RO process to have more efficient process. The last one is about uh, integration of FO process to uh, in in production of water, food, and energy. As I mentioned before, we can use also combination of this osmotic technology to uh, to 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 preserve water, food, and energy. Here uh, here we use uh, microalgae. Microalgae is uh, one of the um, uh, plant that actually quite uh, substantial, quite, quite easy to produce uh, compared with the crop, for example. So you just need uh, CO2. CO2 we have a lot from industry, and then and then uh, uh, light from the sun, and then nutrients. You can produce uh, fresh water microalgae, for example. And the solution you can use F as a fit uh, solution for FO system. And then for uh, draw solution you can use fertilizer. So you use here for fertigation process here. So then the fertilizer uh, during the FO process will uh, become more dilute. You can use directly for fertigation uh, to, to, uh, to put in the food crops. And then the, uh, the fit solution has become more concentrated here. So it means the microalgae become concentrated here. You can extract uh, the microalgae and you can convert for food product and then the biofuel, for example, biodiesel. And also you can collect the biomass. The biomass you can also uh, use for uh, input for anaerobic degradation here. You, you can produce biogas, so as energy. The biogas also can be separated by the membrane for gas separation. Uh, you can separate methane gas and also CO2. The CO2 can go back to the uh, fresh water microalgae. And the methane you can use for uh, energy consumption, for example, for electricity. Uh, of course, for electricity, you can use for pumping, for example, for RO system or using for cooking means also that's why uh, FO system also can be used for water, food and energy uh, production. OK, so this is my last uh, uh, slide. So this is the closer the statement that water as precise substance must be preserved for a future generation and membrane based osmotic technologies could be used for water treatment and serve as advanced clean water production. And hybrid system of membrane-based osmotic technologies can, could be used to maintain water, food, energy nexus, and achieve the global goals. I hope uh, Dr. Abdul Salam will address more about the osmotic technology, mostly on reverse osmosis and how to uh, how to, uh, to to address the the drawback of uh, RO system, and also we can learn more about uh, clean water uh, production from him uh, today. Uh, thank you for your attention, and uh, Ms. Dina, I give back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Yusuf Ipisono, for the wonderful lecture. Uh, now we continue with discussion. We have. Uh, 50 minutes. If you have any question, you can raise your hand, then uh, I can admit you to directly ask to our speaker, or uh, you can write down your question in chat room. Is there any uh, question? Okay, uh, Surya Huda, you can uh, please. Uh, yes, okay. Okay, thank you so much for the time, uh, Mrs. Dina and Sir Yusuf Ibisono. But before I want to ask, is my sound clear? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, after hearing your explanation, uh, I would like to ask about which one is better between RO and FO process. And in the end, I heard a, a combination between them. Uh, would you mind to summarize between RO, RO or FO process and combination, which one is good? Thank you so much. That's my question. Thank you, uh, Surya, and then uh, Dr. Yusuf Ipisono. Okay. I think I can uh, answer directly. Yes, definitely. Okay, fine. 
Okay, thank you for the questions. I will go back to my slide here, uh, comparing FO and RO process. You can see here, uh, using FO, you don't need any uh, energy actually. So just let the system goes with the uh, natural osmotic pressure different here. So means uh, the uh, the water can go pass through the membrane because the the osmotic pressure different. So you can use any type of uh, process for uh, FO here, but using RO system, you need uh, to add more uh, pressure here. Yeah, and of course, uh, uh, give pressure and reverse osmosis is quite high. Uh, normally, people goes to about uh, three, uh, 30 until 40 bars. It's quite high for the pumping the the uh, the fit into the the membrane system in this case because we have to we have to uh, put the pressure that higher than the osmotic pressure different here. So in this case, of course, when you use, uh, for example, a sea water and you want to uh, obtain the clean water of the press water, the osmotic uh, the difference is quite high with the sea water. So that's why you need to put more uh, uh, pressure here. Uh, more pressure means also more energy. So that's why when we compare in the energy consumption, reverse osmosis is higher than forward osmosis, of course. Yeah, but uh, when you see about the result, yeah, uh, in FO process, you will have this one, yeah, draw solution and fit solution. Means also the draw solution, actually the more concentrated solution here. And more concentrated solution means actually you uh, will not achieve the fresh water yeah only you you will you will have the um, the uh, a concentration of for example sugar for uh, 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 salt for example so you you don't have you don't get uh, uh, the fresh water uh, purely in this case so when you use a forward osmosis means the product water is actually not fresh water and uh, you have to uh, further uh, further process the water to become uh, pure uh, clean water in this case. That's why normally people combine, as I mentioned before, combine this one FO process, and then uh, you can have the uh, seawater with the diet seawater means the salt concentration is not so higher as before, and then this one will. Uh, act as the input for RO process. When you use the dilute sea water, means the energy that you need uh, for pumping is less because the osmotic pressure difference is less because you use the less concentrated sea water in this case. And when you have the RO process, you will produce the pure clean water in this case as a product water. So that's why normally FO process will combine with other process. Maybe later Dr. Abdusalan will address also about the electrodialysis process also to produce uh, uh, clean water as uh, alternative for R RO process. But uh, means actually the FO process uh, could, uh, could, could not uh, uh, use as a standalone in, in the real application. That's why as, as I mentioned before, uh, you can uh, read our uh, publication articles in artic this this articles uh, talk about how to combine uh, forward osmosis not as a standalone system but also combined with other system. So you can have a lot of option uh, as I already mentioned before. You can combine with FO. You can combine with other process. The process to have the uh, clean water. I think this is my uh, answer to the question. Thank yes. you. That's uh, clear enough, I think, for uh, Surya. And then we have a question from Zoom, Red Chat Zoom, uh, I think. This is for from uh, Tuti Sriani. Thank you very much, Dr. Yus Dr. Yusuf Ibisono, for the lecture. Uh, my question is basically a technical one. Where and how do you test your membrane here in Indonesia, considering certification, etc. Thank you. You can okay. uh, answer. Yeah, thank you uh, very much for the questions. Yeah, basically in the lab we produce also the membrane. Yeah, and for membrane for 
our uh, research uh, purpose, uh, we test uh, normally with the basic test of membrane uh, for FO, for example, for microfiltration, for example, or ultrafiltration. So we test, yeah, of course, uh, with the basic, uh, with basic, basic, uh, sorry, basic properties of the membrane. For example, the flux. For example, the uh, mechanical uh, strength. For example, you, so you can also. Uh, test in a specific in instrument in the lab, of course. Um, but for commercial application, of course, you have to consider about the specific purposes. So it means the membrane itself uh, can be used for specific purposes. You can customize the the membrane based on what uh, this what the the specific uh, purpose, the specific goal, specific process. So uh, when you when you design the process, you can uh, ask the membrane producer to 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 meet with your demand, for example, in this case. But so far uh, in Brabida University, we still uh, working on the lab scale. So we use for uh, research purposes. So we are not. Uh, selling the membrane yet. Mm -hmm. Hopefully later we can sell also the membrane for commercial application. Okay. I think this is my answer. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, I think uh, you mean that uh, for testing, you still uh, in laboratory? Yes, Is exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, I ha we, have, we still have a five minute time. Uh, so, okay. Uh, we have question. Uh, uh, is there any raise hand? Is Fiska Fiska UI? So please unmute yourself. Fiska, good evening. Good you evening. put fertigation membrane before RO. Sorry, I'm sorry. Your voice is not clear enough. Uh, you put fertigation membrane before the RO system. I have involved in desalination project. Yes. Why do you prefer FO processes than using multimedia membrane filtration? Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Yusuf Ibisono, could you uh, uh, answer it? Yeah, it's not really clear. Maybe you can repeat the question because I cannot uh, okay. hear About, clearly. Uh, also, uh, preferring the osmotic, uh, preferring the uh, this osmotic technology than FO, something like that. And is that clear? Is that right? Uh, why do you discuss? prefer FO process than mm -hmm. multimedia membrane filtration? Okay, so um, of course, uh, when you use in the uh, real application, of course, a combination of the standalone process is, is quite uh, important so it means we are not using a single process to use to produce uh, water but uh, you can combine the advantage of one process and uh, combine with other advantage process depends on the again for the for the goals yeah of course when you for example want to produce uh, demi water for example you, you are not enough to use only a membrane you maybe have to use iron resin exchange, for example, to produce uh, the demi water. But when you use only water for irrigation, for example, you can use, of course, uh, microfiltration, ultrafiltration is enough because when you use RO process, you will also remove all the uh, minerals that are important for the, the plan in this case. So that's why, as I mentioned before, uh, the specific, specific goal will also has a specific combination of the membrane process. I think this is my uh, answer. Thank you. Okay, that's that clear, uh, Ms. Fiska? Okay, thank you very much oh, for thank your you. explanation. So we still have uh, three minutes. Uh, so we have another uh, question from uh, Niputu Eka. Please uh, turn on your uh, video and microphone. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is uh, Is it my voice is enough? No, it's not clear. <laughs> I think 
there are some uh, fake noise. Uh, okay. Oh my God. Uh, uh, right, right now? now? Yes, okay, it's clear. Okay. It's clear. Uh, 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 I want to ask about water. Uh, I think water is important for here. And my question is, uh, what is the contribution of the process for providing water for culture? Oh, oh my God. I I think uh, she asked about how to, uh, I mean, uh, how the contribution of membrane, right? Ah, uh, right. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> you can my, catch my, my doctor, you see okay. Yeah, I think I, think I got, okay. the, the, got it. the message. Okay. Yeah, of course, you see already in the presentation, uh, we have a lot of option for membrane technology to produce uh, clean water from forward osmosis and then also reverse osmosis. Later, I hope also Dr. Abdusalam will talk about electrodialysis uh, and other process are actually uh, quite a lot. Uh, we can have uh, a lot of option in membrane technology to produce uh, clean water. And so far the development of membrane also now become more and more effective and efficient the cost uh, get lower and lower compared with, for example, 10 years ago. So it's mean also this advanced technology can have potential application in the future to maintain our uh, need for the clean water. I think this is my uh, answer. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's clear enough and that's on time. So that's clear enough for Niputu Eka. Okay. Okay, uh, because we will address fro lecture from Dr. Abdul, Abdul Salam, I think we have more time uh, for to know about Fuji Film Technology. So I would like to say thank you for Dr. Yusuf Ibisono for interesting discussion and lecture today. Thank you. And then we are going to our next speaker. Before I start, I would like to introduce our guest lecture today, Dr. Abdul Salam Al Hadidi. His education background is Bachelor from Civil Engineering and, or Irrigation and Water Resources, University of Mosul, Mosul, Iraq. And then he continued master degree for from Municipal Water and Infrastructure or Drinking Water Supply, UNESCO, IHE for uh, water Education, Delft, the Netherlands, and then continue doctoral degree from uh, Civil or Chemical Engineering, University of Twente, the Netherlands. And his uh, publication, uh, publication experience, his corpus index is seven, and he also an exam external examiner for two master science thesis in UNESCO IHE, the Netherlands also a reviewer in several international journals, such as a Journal Membrane Science, Desalination, Water Desalination, and others. His related experience and skill, he is project leader from Mides and Revived Subsidies Project by EU, Fuji Film Tilbrook, the Netherlands. Development and Quality Assurance, Fuji Film Tilbrook, the Netherlands. Euro Membrane Institute, University of Twente, the Netherlands, senior researcher, and then Membrane Technology Group, the Rural Water Supply and Sanitation Project, Yemen Procurement and Technical Officer. So without further ado, to Dr. Abdul Salam Al Hadidi, time is yours for, I think we have uh, 40 my, 45 minutes, doctor. Yes, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, first, um, um, dear uh, Dean of the faculty, dear uh, organizers uh, and dear participants, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I would like to really uh, deeply from my heart to thank you for this kind invitation uh, for your special event. 
that it's uh, actually a universal uh, um, uh, event. It's it's not only an, a normal event, but it's a universal uh, uh, event for the faculty. So congratulations for your uh, really big achievement. It's um, uh, really uh, I'm I'm really glad uh, to hear your uh, development, your stories, um, which are really uh, you should be proud of. Um, I would like uh, in, in my slides or in, in, in my speech in general to talk a bit about uh, membrane technology in general first, especially in the area of, uh, um, uh, let's say, cl uh, classification of membranes. Then I will move gradually to the main subject of, of uh, this lecture, which is uh, related to the membrane fouling. If you allow me, then I will uh, start uh, with a small introduction to where I'm working and located, actually. Um, I'm working for Fuji Film Corporation, which is, um, um, let's say, the headquarter now is in, in Japan. And, and actually, they have many uh, offices and manufacturers um, uh, around the world and uh, three research centers, one in Japan, one in Netherlands and one in the US. Basically, um, we are located in, in the Netherlands, where we have a, a big site relatively comparing to other companies. We are around 1,000 employees in this uh, uh, site. Worldwide, we are 80,000. So yeah, 1,000 is, is a big portion, let's say. And uh, in, 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 in Tilburg, this is a city in the southern part of the Netherlands, we have uh, this site, which is uh, containing uh, actually three big manufacturers uh, where we produce uh, photo paper, uh, also uh, aluminum plates for offset uh, printing. Uh, also, the interesting part for today is about the membranes. Uh, we produce two, two different type of membranes. One is a spiral wand membrane, but not for water, but, but for gas purification while also we are uh, producing uh, ion exchange membranes. We have also uh, Open Innovation Hub, and this building here, that's my pointing is here, is, is the research center where we developed actually the new product and including the membrane. First, um, yeah, about uh, water scarcity. I, I will address a bit more uh, in, in some points about uh, following what uh, my colleague uh, Yusuf already addressed. And, and it's, it's not really a um, uh, clear white picture what we have. And we think it's the, the world is going really in, in a, an e a dangerous area as uh, Yusuf already mentioned. So the scarcity of, of water is, is clear and um, it's expected that around 1.8 billion, uh, nearly in a few years, they will have absolute water sca scarcity. But of course, it depends on how do we define the water stress. Is it 1,700 Q per person per year in, in some countries? This is the level where they think that, per, that the country is already in stress. But in some poor countries, especially that they are let's say under development country, then they are talking about 500. But that doesn't mean that we have, let, let's say, uh, yeah, a lot of water. No, we have not that much. And, and the reason is sometimes it's not that we don't have water, but we, we are really uh, not good in managing uh, the resources. So poor management is, is one of the reasons why we have scarcity. Also, let's say, um, uh, in some countries, the water is available, but, but the quality of the water is, is not the right one, like a pollution or no access to uh, drinking water or waste water uh, uh, systems. Um, another big problem, which, which can be especially in, in the areas where uh, countries are really uh, under uh, stress, like the Middle East and the North Africa and, and, and those countries, that, that the, the use of the groundwater is really high and it's overdrafting. That means the recharge of water uh, is, is not really um, enough to, to keep the, the same level. And, and imagine in, in some countries that they are digging wheels now for, for, drink, uh, for uh, drinking water, ground drinking water, up to 800 or 1,000 meters uh, underground. And 
unfortunately, some in some cases, 70% in some countries, 70% of the groundwater is used for agriculture, which is actually absolutely um, uh, overdrafting. Um, the high population growth and, and conflicts uh, that happening in, in, in some areas, uh, pollution of resources. So it's, it's, it's not only pollution of water that is available, but uh, we pollute sometimes the, the resource itself. And we, we know this kind of conflicts now is, is happening in the, around the world. And I think what's happening in Egypt, Sudan, and Ethiopia is a very good example on conflict uh, about water resources. So uh, from salinity point of view, we can classify the water based on the concentration. So basically, we all know from high school that 75, uh, 71%, 75% of the uh, earth area or uh, the area of, of, of the surface of the, era, the earth or our planet is covered with, by water, but it's not drinkable water, it's, it's saline water. And I have a, classif a classification of water, which is here in the right side, so where you can see that, yeah, we, we have, for example, the Dead Sea that has uh, above two, uh, or around 300 gram per liter of, of salt, while in most of the sea waters, we have between 30 and 45 gram per liter. This is a, a quite high because we cannot drink this water, but in, in term of volume or, or uh, weight, uh, this is not that much. It's only 3.5 percent of salt you add to uh, water, then you cannot drink it uh, anymore. However, for from drinking water uh, point of view, we have to lower the salinity level to between 350 uh, to 1,000 milligram per liter, according to WHO. Luckily, we have some technologies that can do this work, and even we can go to a level that there is almost no salt, and we have to add some salt, which is, for example, the RO uh, permeate or the distilled water to be able to drink. Worldwide, there is a, a huge number of, I, I would say a huge number, but it, it's a big number comparing to the past uh, of a number of plants, uh, desalination plants and that around the world. This picture is a, a bit uh, old, but let's say in, in, in absolute uh, uh, numbers, but in, in percentage is still uh, the same. That means most of the desalination market is in North of Africa and Middle East and uh, America, where uh, around the world there is around 16,000 um, uh, plant and every day there is an, another plant that will be open somewhere with, uh, for example, Middle East is occupying, uh, occupying around 50%, almost 50% of the um, uh, amount of water that is desalinated in the world while actually uh, this percentage drop in, in, in Asia and Pacific and North Af uh, America. You see that uh, basically even in countries like in Europe, which is very green and a, a lot of rain, but still um, they are also looking for um, let's, what's, what's usually called is sustainable um, resources for uh, fresh water, either using desalination or distillation technology. What is membrane? Yeah, membrane, I, I assume that most of you knows that it's a very thin selective uh, barrier and it has an ability to separate two solutions with different concentration, for example. And then, then I think the nice example or famous example of membrane is the tea bag that you are using in your tea, where uh, flavor and color can come out while the, uh, the bag keep the leaves inside. So that's a, a nice example of a membrane. And it's, a, yeah, there is already uh, many different of type of membranes based on either material or the design of the pore size or the, the use of the membrane uh, in, 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 in different applications. Um, the um, osm osmosis uh, uh, phenomena was discovered uh, quite a uh, long time, eh? so 1748. But uh, around two, 200 years later, then the concept of uh, membrane desalination was uh, introduced in 1950. 
Since then, a lot of the uh, of a lot of development uh, in the membrane topology, in the desalination, especially, uh, has happened, and um, membrane become like um, a new material that is involved in many pro uh, prod production process in many applications, either in an industry. You can think about food, about water, uh, medicine, solvent production, purification, whatever. In energy, uh, a nice example that maybe I will touch it later, is, is the blue energy where we produce energy from freshwater and seawater, not by using um, uh, the osmosis uh, pressure, but actually the potential electrical potential difference. Water purification is, is the main um, uh, subject for, for the filtration and, and for the membrane, actually. Health also, you can think about uh, artificial kidneys or blood purification in, in general. So membrane, Everywhere around you, you will see it. Even in your laptop, in your um, uh, telephone, there is some piece of membrane that is separ uh, separating uh, materials inside the battery, for example. So, uh, um, usually when we talk about membrane, but then, yeah, membrane, uh, what, what is the different type of membranes are available in the market? Actually, you, we can characterize them based on different. Um, um, subjects or directions, either the driving force, so we have a pressure-driven membrane, concentration-driven membrane, like a forward uh, membrane, but also electrical potential, uh, like ion exchange membrane with their application like EDR, CDI, EDI, and, and etc. Membrane morphology, uh, How? What, what is the shape of the membrane? Uh, the geometry, for example, there is a tubular, there is a flat sheet, I will give some examples. But also uh, symmetric, asymmetric, so made with one layer or several layers. Pore size are very, there is some very dense uh, membranes, line ion exchange membrane has no pores actually, are all very sub, sub nanometer uh, pores. A porous material like microfiltration, ultra, ultrafiltration, and nanofiltration. In general properties also, we can classify either to hydrophilic, hydrophobic, or based on charge, positive charge that's the, in the surface, for, for example, but also in the bulk of the membrane, some negative uh, charge and others like neutral or zoetroionic and, and cetera. Based on material also, we can classify the membrane, either polymeric or ceramic or metallic, metallic like iron or, or other uh, metals, we can make membranes. And they are famous actually in this area for gas membrane. In the operation mode also, we can, we can classify maybe not the membrane, but the process in, in out or uh, the flow direction as well. This is an example of different membranes. Here you can see the hollow fiber membrane. This is a geometry classification, either hollow fiber um, in, in, for example, ultrafiltration. This is a microfiltration. This is a hemodialysis uh, membrane. Those are a ceramic membrane with uh, multiple uh, pores or let's say multiple uh, feed channels. Flat sheet, for example, this is the uh, MBR membrane, my membrane biological uh, reactor, where two sheets are uh, glued to one frame and using a, a vacuum pump to, to filtrate a solution. This is an electrodialysis. Also, we use a flat sheet in here. But also, you can um, make the membrane in a spiral wand. For example, this is for NFRO, uh, and, and this is for a gas membrane that is produced by uh, Fujifilm. And this one is actually a cross section of, for example, um, a type of membrane that is asymmetric membrane where the very thin selective membrane is in the top, as you can see in the cross section, while a support uh, a porous material is in, in the bottom or underneath of, of the selective layer. So for a pressure driven membrane, uh, I already mentioned that we have several types where we can remove suspended material, bacteria, viruses, and that actually depends on the pores that, that we design in, in the membrane. Uh, when you go down in, in this scale, you go down also with the pore size, which is the opening inside the membrane that the, the, the molecule or the ion should uh, go through. And you, as you can see, RO has a very small pore size. We assume they are pore size, but in, in some theory, the, uh, the um, process is diffusion more than actually uh, size exclusion. 
And um, as is already mentioned, the, um, yeah, to operate RO, you need a high pressure. But uh, um, another um, issue in, in the RO, if, if I look to the previous uh, uh, picture here that I, I just mentioned, that the amount of salt comparing to the um, uh, amount of water in the seawater is really small. It's only 3.5. And in RO, you push all the water through the membrane to remove the salt. Yeah, what? Yeah, this is not efficient if you think about it. I think the best, or not myself, but who invented the ion exchange membrane thought that maybe removing the salt, which is a small uh, percentage of, of the total uh, pork, removing only the salt will be more beneficial. And then they come with the idea of ion exchange membrane and electrodialysis, which is actually if you have water here flowing or it's in, in a jar where you have two electrodes, positive and negative, immediately when, when you put a potential difference between the electrodes, ions will start to uh, actually, they are associated in, in the water, so they are swimming, then they will be attracted by the, those electrodes. If you put uh, um, uh, membranes, a special membrane, cationic and uh, anionic membrane between, then you can actually make uh, streams. And actually one stream where the ions will be uh, accumulated, that's the brine, and the streams where the uh, ions will be removed from, that will be your product or your desalination, uh, desalinated water. And you will need some electrolyte running uh, around the, the, the electrodialysis system. This is actually the concept of electrodialysis. Uh, and the uh, CEM, AM, those are cationic and anionic membranes are uh, the ion exchange membranes. Now it's uh, time to go to, uh, to the main uh, problem, which is about the membrane fouling. Um, membrane fouling is actually, um, uh, by definition, is the accumulation of uh, undesired material on the membrane surface or in the spacer. This will uh, actually result in um, problems for, for the process, like um, uh, drop in selectivity, uh, also increasing in the pressure that you have to put in to let the water go through. So it's not really a nice phenomena, but we have to cope with it. And to cope with it, uh, we have to define it. So we have a claudial type of fouling, any particles that can be present, organic or non-organic. And um, there is some solution sometimes like a cleaning, a regular cleaning of membranes, either chemical or air or, or flushing. A biofouling, which is actually the growth of bacteria on the surface of the membrane. Also, we have uh, to think about the food that is already available in the water, which is the organic matters that uh, uh, actually dissolved organic matters that the bacteria will use it to grow. We can clean it with also chemicals, but the best is actually to um, uh, uh, to be care with with what is what do you have in the feed as a uh, source for the problem. In organic fouling, like a scaling, it's the precipitation of uh, salts when you exceed the saturation limit, actually, on, on the membrane surface due to, for example, the concentration uh, polarization in the RO. And also, it can be cleaned, but of course, when I mention chemi especially chemical cleaning, there is an environmental problem, but also there is an impact on the lifetime of the membrane. So it's better always to prevent before it happens. That's what, what is about here. This is an example of organic and particulate um, um, uh, fouling on the membrane surface. It's, it's a dark brown. This is a, a, um, a scaling. It can be calcium uh, carbonate, calcium sulfate, uh, barium sulfate, also uh, any kind of, of uh, scaling or uh, salt precipitation. This is a biofilm and this is a magnesium iron uh, mixture of uh, precipitation on the membrane surface. As I mentioned, this is actually killing the, the lifetime of your membrane. 
but yeah, uh, uh, I have a feed water and, and, and it's a row water and I, I want to use RO. Then how to know if I'm allowed to use this water or to pump this di water directly to RO? I need some index or uh, a scale of quality that uh, gives me the hand. So let's assume that it's you have a RO with a poor quality. This is a virtual water uh, quality scale from poor to good. And uh, actually you have your raw water is from a river, from a lake, from ground, whatever, from seawater. It's a poor quality. Then you need some pre-treatment. So some filtration steps sometimes like ultra filtration to improve the quality of your water. And you use uh, two end dishes here, the SDI and the uh, MFI uh, to uh, indicate if you have uh, the right quality of the water before you pump it to the RO. And actually Actually, we have some scales from experience only here, especially SDI. SDI is very, very old, I think from the 60th, end, end of 60th, uh, last uh, century, it was used. So we built some experience. MFI, not really, because it's, it's quite new. And what we learned that if you have a quality of uh, water that has SDI between three to five, that's an absolute value then the quality of the water is good enough to be pumped uh, uh, to RO or even below three that will be even better but above five is the i15 minutes uh, the value is five then you have a problem uh, but what is, is the eye and how we measure it? Uh, I have a small movie. I hope it will work. Uh, I tested yesterday and it was working. Um, actually, you have a, a filter holder. And, and there you place actually a piece of membrane that it, it's a defined membrane 0.45 micrometer uh, pore size. You close the uh, filter holder and you put it, actually you connect it to your uh, feed or a sample from your feed. This is a lab test actually, but you can do it also in, in, in the, um, let's say in the plant. So the, there is your sample is going through your filter. First, you flush the surface of your filter with some water, then you set up your pressure around two bar, 2.13 actually. And then you start the filtration and looking to time, you, select, you collect the first sample, half liter, you determine the time to uh, collect the first sample, which is T1, and then you continue filtrating uh, the water for 15 minutes. But before that, you have to measure the temperature you, to ensure that the change in temperature is within one degree. Then actually after 15 minutes, you uh, collect a second sample of half liter and uh, you determine the time to collect that filter, which is actually T2. Uh, Basically, you check the temperature again to be sure that you are within the standard ASTM standard. Then you use T, the time T1, T2, and the 15 minutes to calculate the SDI. However, when I, uh, I was doing my PhD, this, um, um, I, I was focusing on uh, the SDI. I, I tried to prove to people that what you are measuring sometimes is really wrong and, and it doesn't reflect the reality. I, I, I focused on the quality of the filter that is used, the quality of the sample, the effect of uh, different, uh, let's say, experimental errors and etc. So I will not go in detail about all, but I will refer here to some articles that you can read later. But for example, the membranes that it's used in, 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 in such test, it's a very simple test and it's done, believe me, like a couple of times a day in every plant before the RO to ensure that there will be a good quality. So it's a, a routine work and people uh, actually reading the, um, just what is available uh, as information to do it. While there is a lot of details there that may mislead you in the right uh, value. And here is the, actually when the call the membrane is a, a nominal 0.45 micrometer. When I measure several samples from different manufacturers, I found really a big difference between uh, what is written in the uh, box and what is actually uh, measured. 
Um, different types I, I found here, yeah, when, when I look to the cross section, some of them uh, sponge, some of them has a, a rainforest, some of them uh, different in materials, some, uh, some of them has a different layers or not symmetric, or you are, they are using a mixture of different chemicals. So, and I looked to the surface, the roughness of the surface of those uh, samples. I'm still talking about the membrane used in this SDI uh, 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 test. And they have a really different uh, geometry or, or let's say roughness on the surface, which may affect the, the final result of the SDI. And indeed, as you can see in this uh, graph, I found that for the same water, this is artificial water with some particles, a controlled test, I, I found that you can obtain anything between five and two SDI, depends on the membrane that you are using. And the, I, I, I found that the membrane resistance, the hydraulic resistance of the membrane is defining actually uh, which membrane, uh, which SDI that you will obtain. This is risky because it's we are talking about the quality of the water to RO and there is some warranty, some contracts about it based on the SDI value, then how to measure it, how to, to be able to uh, actually uh, to work with it. This is the MFI, which is actually uh, called Modified Fouling Index. It was invented by my professor, uh, Jan Schippers. And in this test, actually, we use the same filter and the same filter holder. Uh, we do a, fil a simple filtration uh, experiments. We actually uh, plot the T over V, the time over volume uh, that is filter uh, um, versus the volume. Uh, we have uh, draw uh, this nice curve where we have a different fouling mechanism, we call it. And the middle is the cake filtration. And we think this is a specific for a specific water sample, regardless which type of uh, sample or the time of, of filtration test. Then I, I made a correlation between the salt density index and the MFI, and this gave me actually the opportunity to, uh, to work in modeling part where I can predict based on the membrane properties what can be the SDI. And um, then the next step uh, that I have done, uh, it was related to the, uh, let's say, correction of the SDI. Can I correct it for, the, for the, those, uh, let's say, experimental errors? And also, uh, can I, uh, by definition, change a bit the SDI to be able to uh, say something about the water quality and not about the membrane or the sample quality that I'm using? which is, uh, is the I, uh, volume based on, uh, in the state of time. So this is the volume based. Uh, in the past, in the previous slide of, of the SDI, we were waiting 15 minutes uh, for, for, uh, to collect the second sample. In my test here, actually, I, I, pref um, I prefer to wait for a certain volume. And in this test, actually, um, I prefer not to use a, a tank because a tank is a source also from, uh, for a problem. I prefer to use a sensor for a pressure because you have more uh, better control. You collect the first sample, the half liter, then time one will be uh, actually defined. Then you wait till you, you filter a certain volume, which is around 3.5 liters, and then you collect the second sample. Then time one, time two, and the time two, uh, and the volume that you are using, you can calculate the SDIV. In this way, you ensure that the fouling potential, the, foul, the amount of foulance uh, arrived to the filter will be the same, regardless the hydraulic resistance of the membrane. Other, um, let's say, um, uh, mistakes that can happen is actually related to the equipment that you are using and, and some others. I will not go in details and the effect of everyone, but those are the main recommendations out of this, that uh, please don't put your sample uh, stored somewhere, uh, the sample, I mean the water sample stored somewhere for a few days especially if there is a sun and, and, and the high temperature, because then you would change the quality of your uh, uh, sample. Uh, clean well the, the tank that you are using uh, to uh, collect the sample. Put the filter holder in the same level as, as the pressure gauge, because a few uh, millipars may 
affect your results. Use accurate uh, equipment. Don't touch this filter um, that you are using for the SDI test and uh, use the right filter holder uh, and flush the surface because that also may affect if you have some air bubbles inside uh, your filter holders. Use the right direction of the filter and uh, there is some indication on time uh, when you have a problem with, with the quality of the water or not. Uh, use uh, actually a fresh uh, membranes, but if, uh, if you have a um, quiet amount, then please store them in the right way and in a dry and uh, away from the sun. So based on this experience in the lab, I, I, I tried to use this experience in a real water uh, uh, desalination plant that's in, uh, located in actually in, uh, near the North Sea in Netherlands. And there I, I, I looked to the uh, process diagram of the plant. There is um, pre some pretreatment, including um, coagulation, acidification, etc. Uh, ultra filtration and then RO in two stages. And those numbers like 20, 21 are the samples where I, I collected and measured the SDI and MFI to validate my actually uh, my uh, previous conclusions. This is actually the inlet of the um, uh, plant as you can see. Uh, this is a seawater, and, and this happens during my test. This is um, actually algae bloom. This is a foam, seawater foam, which are, which are really bad for, for reverse osmosis. So we had a really difficult time. So I was lucky that it was there. So indeed, using different type of filters, I was obtaining different uh, SDI. Um, I showed this to the operator. He said, wow. This is strange. We we always think that we have um, SDI after the ultra filtration around three, while you are uh, so in some cases you have below one. This is uh, different. This is the actually um, uh, the correlation between SDI and fouling index, and you can see that SDI has also a drawback so that it has uh, it has to flatten somewhere because of the uh, calculation of the SDI, and from here to here the quality or the index, it doesn't show any change in the quality. All are very bad. Basically, when I used uh, my correction for the membrane resistance and, and for uh, other parameters, then I was able to actually uh, normalize the results of different membranes, as you can see. But still that this flattening part is, is there. Uh, while in when I used my new definition of SDI, which is based on volume, then I got more linear. It's not absolute linear, but more linear relation between the quality of the water, which is the fouling index and the SDI index. Uh, based on the experience, we moved actually uh, to uh, more industrial um, application, which is related to can we uh, uh, produce a setup that has all this um, uh, experience and information, especially uh, from uh, the filter holder that it's defined. So you will uh, buy the cartridge from the company and you don't need to think about the type of filter, the resistance, the, let's say, uh, touching the filter. So it's not open and closed, it's disposal to one. Also, the, um, uh, you don't need to think about the um, a tank because this you can connect it actually to your feed and it has a small pump that it's dedicated uh, as much as we can for, for this purpose. Um, the filtration uh, curve actually is, is defined and we will be um, drawn and, and plotted directly so you can see it uh, developed in, in, in an interface here in the small device. It's very small. It's, uh, I think, 40 centimeter by uh, 30 and the width is around 20 centimeter. So it's um, actually mobile device that you can take. It, it has a battery uh, where you can work also uh, if there is no electricity uh, available. Uh, you are uh, independent from uh, personal error um, completely, but also the quality of the equipment. 
this was developed in, in uh, with a company called Convergence. Uh, I worked with them uh, for six months. And it this device can give you already the SDI, but also the corrected SDI, uh, SDI based on volume, but also the MFI. So all uh, indices are, are uh, uh, let's say, listed. Um, one last remark is the MFI. Uh, it, it was just a, um, a, a university work, but literally uh, ASTM uh, considered the MFI 0.45 as a standard test for uh, quality uh, of uh, water. And now it's uh, in combination with the SDI that you can uh, use uh, to test the uh, quality of the, your feed to the RO. I don't know how much I have time because I, I missed the, the starting. You still have time. You still have time. Uh, until I still have time. Four, uh, 30. Until How four, much? Until uh, 10 minutes more. 10 minutes. 10 minutes more. Yeah. Oh, OK. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, um, if I look to uh, what, what I would like to uh, address a bit more is in the ion exchange uh, membrane and the electrodialysis because I, 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 it looks that I was very fast in my uh, talk. But um, basically what I would like to say that uh, any type of membrane we are using either uh, reverse osmosis, ultrafiltration, microfiltration, also including the electrodialysis, uh, in in uh, in somehow this fouling is, uh, problem is happening, either in the spacer like in RO or electrodialysis, or in the membrane surface. Then we are talking about even the uh, tubular uh, uh, type of membranes. So uh, the the main uh, issue what we are facing in electrodialysis is a bit different from RO because our membrane, ion exchange membranes are, are actually um, uh, charged. And you can imagine RO is uh, most of the time uh, are um, cellulose acetate, for example, and they have a negative charge and, and they are less sensitive for fouling. While in, uh, in the ion exchange world, what we found that uh, um, uh, the anionic uh, exchange membrane that has a, a positive uh, charge that attracts all kind of uh, particles um, and, and bacteria, viruses, whatever uh, in the water to the surface. Of course, uh, in, in we have more flexible flexibility in the ion exchange membrane compared to, to the RO. And there we can uh, think about anti-fouling uh, layer uh, that can uh, help the membrane to uh, work around the, um, uh, the fouling. Um, another uh, advantage of ion exchange membrane that I can maybe use a few minutes to draw um, are related to actually uh, the energy uh, used for in ion exchange membranes. Maybe I can go to the slides. Or we can continue with discussion if you if you prefer. Yes. So uh, just one so minute can... more. Oh yes. Okay. One minute more. Yeah. So um, basically, what you have in in the ion exchange membrane is that you uh, to you you are able to tune the quality uh, of your uh, product, which is the di uh, dilute, com uh, dilute com comparing to the RO where in RO you have one quality because you you cannot tune it. You, you pressurize fully the water through the membrane. You got a uh, purified water. And sometimes in, in some cases they have to, again, uh, uh, actually add some salt to the permeate of the RO to be able to drink it. While in uh, electrodialysis, you you can tune the, the um, uh, potential that you are applying to the system, then you can control actually the quality of the diluate. So we have some advantages in, in uh, energy consumption, in uh, fouling management, and also in the tuning of, of the quality of your uh, permeate. And uh, we have uh, several systems running in the world, in, especially in the brackish water. This is the really the, the right uh, place for electrodialysis. Also in, in food uh, industry, um, we have also some uh, systems running there. 
I think with that, I, I, I finished my talk, and um, I will be really glad to hear your uh, Thank you, Dr. Abdul Salam, for the wonderful lecture. So that's, I think it's uh, clear, but uh, we still need the discussion and we continue with the discussion. If you have any question, you can raise your hand and then we can admit you to directly ask to our speaker. Question, the Term one, is there any question? Okay. Uh, so either it was very clear or not clear Paulan Sakila. So. Kaulan, uh, Kaulan, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, uh, excuse me. Is my voice clear enough? Yes, your voice yes. is clear enough. Uh, thank you. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Kaulan Sakila. I would like to ask uh, you some questions. Uh, how the effective and how the effectiveness and uh, efficiency is the method and system uh, that you present and uh, is it applicable for third world countries and in Australia? Uh, thank you. So he asks about the efficiency and the applicable of the treatment. So Dr. Abdul Salam, uh, could you please uh, answer the question? Um, Did you get it? I will assume that maybe you are talking about the ion exchange membrane because uh, reverse osmosis already uh, defined by uh, Dr. Yusuf. Is that correct? No, uh, he talked about uh, how about the efficiency of the uh, seal density index of uh, your uh, equipment, in your equipment. How is uh, the efficiency of your equipment? Okay, um, the equipment uh, is mm -hmm. very efficient, actually, um, in terms of the number of uh, per day first. The cell density index is not a method for uh, uh, treatment of water. It's just um, uh, actually an index for the water quality. And uh, you can do with this small device up to um, 70, 80 uh, tests a day before you need to charge the device. a small string. What volume for the, your string? For what volume you can change the field, the string? Uh, the the stream is is not clear. I cannot hear you well. I don't understand. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe, really, yeah. maybe the connection, internet connection is thing that. Uh, Colin Sakila. Excuse me. Is that clear in? Really, yeah. Maybe the connection, okay. connection is. Uh, I think it's more is uh quite enough for a Holland Sakila, and then we going to next uh. 
Uh, please um, unmute yourself. Here yeah, is uh, raining That's quite fine. hard here in Malang. I don't uh, know. My... Uh, because uh, I have. Okay, maybe I can. This does my question. Uh, my voice is clear. Uh, a bit, but uh, sometimes it's uh, it's not stable. <laughs> It's not stable, yeah. Uh, no, it's raining quite hard here. Not clear enough. Uh, so, please. Pak Yusuf, voice Hello? better than Budina voice. So, Pak Yusuf can handle. Okay, okay. Take so, I can uh, handle more because I think uh, Budina uh, uh, voice is not really clear. Yeah. So I I know from the okay. I think Okay, uh, we have two participants raise hand. First uh, Kezia Millennia, maybe you can ask your question directly. Uh, okay. Um Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my name is Kezia Milenia. I'm majoring at Bioprocess Engineering 2019 from Brawijaya uh, University. So I have a question for you, Mr. Abdusalam. Um, uh, what is the major following in reverse osmosis and reverse osmosis? And how to control the following? Thank you. Uh, is my voice clear? So you asked about falling in RO process and electrodialysis, right? Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, okay. Uh, Dr. Ramsalam, you can hear the questions. Okay. She asked about the falling, uh, major falling in RO and or electrolysis. Because my voice is clear enough. Uh, how about what I can say about the, uh, the falling in, in uh, ion exchange membrane in RO? is uh, uh, based on our uh, experience, current experience, then we, we uh, realize that in ion exchange membrane or electrodialysis they are less sensitive for falling comparing to the arrow. I don't know if my voice is clear at your side. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So basically, in, in uh, electrodialysis, yes, yes. we have yeah. more options to uh, control the fouling problem comparing to the RO. Um, uh, in, in, uh, also, if there is some mistakes in the operation or operation, the membrane is less sensitive comparing to the RO. In RO, we are talking about selective layer that is a few micrometer thick. And if you have a small mistake, then this layer can, can go in while in ion exchange membrane, 
that the membrane itself uh, it has a thickness of um, 150 micro or higher and then it, it is less uh, sensitive and it can last for a longer time um, ion exchange membrane uh, can handle uh, specific, uh, specific problems that RO cannot handle, like um, sil uh, silica-based fouling. And, and there is some areas uh, where RO cannot be used. Uh, for example, where um, um, the salinity is uh, uh, higher than the seawater, then, uh, then RO cannot be used in this case, while ion exchange membrane in a special, a special design, a special system called, for example, ADM, we can handle uh, a feed that has uh, uh, RO brine so a uh, double the amount of salt that is in the natural uh, seawater, uh, we are able to produce uh, fresh water with some percentage, of course. So uh, electrodialysis, uh, let's say, has its own advantages, also disadvantages comparing to, our, uh, to RO, but the main one, which is related to the subject of today, is really related to the fouling. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Abdusal, for the answers. Welcome. Okay, still have one more uh, raised hand participants. Still one more participants. Uh, Iqbal Salahuddin. I'm sorry, Dr. Abdusal, you said this one. To the... Uh, Your voice is not clear enough. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, uh, uh, thank please, you very much. Uh, Mr. Iqbal, I can handle it. Thank you, Dr. Yusuf Ibisana. Okay. So uh, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. Actually, I am from PT Mili Water. Uh, actually, I also sell that for the SDI in Indonesia. Uh, so, uh, yeah, good morning, <laughs> Mr. Abdul Salam. I would like to have I, I have some question about the uh, MFF test and also SDI test. Yeah, because uh, for the industrial, uh, we always use this parameter for uh, measuring about the of uh, pretreatment condition before enter the RO. Yeah. So, uh, for SDI itself, yeah, we know it is the conventional uh, measurement. Yeah. In industrial, we always using this parameter to understand about the uh, quality of. The, uh, but we also know the MFF test, and uh, maybe you also have efforts. Um, yeah, here's about the microfilter falling factor and also SFF test, soluble material falling factor. Uh, which one, the MFF test, microfilter falling factor, it is based on the volume. So can be identify uh, this MFF test same as the MFI? So Dr. Abdul Salam, uh, could you hear the question and you can tell um, me answer. They, yes, I, I, I heard the question and uh, basically low your voice. Uh, My but, voice um, is not uh, what I should say. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> the quality. <laughs> Okay.
we are sorry because the technical problem i think so uh the mr iqbal uh uh and asks about the what the efficiency of i result So I type in the chat. So I, I heard the question. I, I, I heard the question. It's, it's for me clear. And actually, uh, the MFF uh, and the other type of founding indices yes. developed around the world are basically uh, for, mm -hmm. um, actually measuring the quality of it. Uh, we all uh, have uh, the, the aim to exclude the quality of the filter that we are using in the test. Um, and we should talk about the quality of the water sample. Uh, the uh, micro filter fouling factor is, is also close to the MFI uh, in, in, in terms of definition. Uh, however, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the acceptance worldwide is still not that uh, um, really, um, let's say, defined for, for the new uh, indices. Uh, even uh, my uh, correction, the SDI plus or the new definition of the SDI based on volume, um, are actually still within uh, the, uh, let's say, for, for literature or for publications, but uh, not considered as a worldwide standard. And, and this is the biggest challenge, actually. MFI talk like uh, 30 years before it, it has been accepted as a standard test uh, worldwide by ASTM which is the organization uh, defining the standards for, for the uh, water industry. Uh, so I agree with you that, that yeah, we, we can do a lot, but um, we should in the end speak the same language. Otherwise we cannot understand each other. So if you measure MFF, and I don't have the, uh, let's say, the right uh, level to know what is the MFF and what the number or the, uh, uh, let's say, the results of this test means for my uh, direct application, then I cannot. Mr. Iqbal, is that uh, clear enough? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Abdul Salam. Is that, it's clear enough, I think. So we still have time. So is there any question uh, again from uh, chat room, Zoom? Uh, from Rizky Woro. Hi, Mr. Abdul Salam. That is such amazing presentation. Can you share the initial cost and operation maintenance of the water membrane equipment? It is possible to build it for a small, small village scale and let them to operate it by themselves. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. I, I, I see that is still there is some confusion. Uh, between uh, actually the fouling index and real uh, filtration plant. What I have presented is not a system for treatment of water. It was just a device to perform the SDI in, in RO plant. Even though um, this company Convergence, but also I know that they have um, quite stable, uh, um, let's say, a small device for um, um, uh, production of the villages or in a remote area. Uh, uh, please, uh, I, I can refer here to the project that I was working in. It is it's called Revived Water. 
Now you have a small electrodialysis system for remote area uh, powered by uh, solar energy using electrodialysis system to uh, purify and desalinate uh, water from brackish water to uh, drinking water. Uh, this small system um, produce around two to three cube uh, of water per day for a small community. Uh, and it doesn't need actually uh, an, a big experience in the operation, a small experience in, in how to change uh, small parts, but the major uh, uh, of the process will be run uh, automatically, including the cleaning. Uh, so please uh, look in revived project. There you can find some uh, some more information about such system. The system that I presented in the my slides is only for the test for 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 the SDI measurement, which is actually uh, is needed in 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 a big uh, RO plant or or medium RO plants usually used. So. Uh, is that clear enough, uh, Miss Roro, Rizky Woro? I think it's clear enough, Doctor Abdul Salam. So the next uh, question is from uh, Miss Agustin Krishna Wardani. She is a lecturer from uh, Agricultural Technology. It is possible to handle the following problem by using natural solution such as fake. Uh, application, face and um, face application. It is possible to handle it falling problem. What what doesn't mean fake application or face application? Fake fake uh fake fake I think. Fake. Fash, yeah, fash. fake. This is the bacterial. Oh, fake. Oh, fake. Ah. Bacterial. Oh, bacterial. Okay. Yeah. So basically, in in your pre by the way, the connection now is perfect. I can hear you all well. So uh, basically, uh, in the pre treatment, you can actually do a lot of work uh, to prevent the the fouling by removing the source of the problem, and that's what I try to mention. And 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 uh, for example, any kind of pre treatment, it can be done uh, normally or at this time uh, the the direction actually is more to the green, um, um, let's say, a, a green pre-treatment. That means uh, zero chemicals in, in, in the feed. And um, in, in some cases, for example, in, in inside a Fuji film, we are producing our water by ourselves. We use the MBR, which is the microbial uh, uh, filtration type. So uh, microbiology um, filters that can produce the water in the right quality for, for the RO. Uh, we use the bacteria actually to lower the uh, level of the organic matters in, in, in the feed water. This can, it, it, so the, the design of the pre-treatment depends a lot on the source of the water that you are using and the quality of that water. So basically, yes, we can eliminate not 100% of course, but eliminate to a, a, a certain level the, the fouling problem by um, uh, putting the right design for the pretreatment. Okay, so is that clear enough, Ms. Agustin Krishnawardani, or you can ask uh, directly to Dr. Abdul, Abdul Salam? No, I, I, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Abdul Salam. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. So Just is okay. there any question anymore? Uh, you can raise your hand. You can raise your hand. Is there any question anymore? So I think the I MFF and MFI convert with the groundwater into clean water that that can be consumed by us. I mean, water for drinking. Basically, is that uh, basically SPI? The, uh, 
-hmm. Basically, that is the I and the MFI are quality measurements for mm -hmm. the uh, water that you have to pump it in the end to the arbor. So it's, it's, uh, it's a test that you have to do regularly in the uh, desalination plant. So it's not a method to produce water by itself. It's just a, a, a sensor, let's say, to uh, uh, judge the quality of water. So, which is mean that uh, this is the index, I think, is that right? Index just uh, for yes. the method and index, something like that. Okay. So, yes. is there any However, the question? Analysis, any more? The EDI is actually uh, the method to desalinate water. Is there any question? So, Dr. Abdul Salam, which uh, best process for the producing the clean water? Which one is the best process? for producing clean water anyway um it's 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 a it's a, a very uh, good question uh, however uh, there is no direct answer um, to uh, such a question it, it depends a lot on the source that you are using and i think that the best is to uh, hybrid systems where different technologies different process technology can be used uh, in, in, in optimal way uh, because it's not only about the, uh, having the water but also the cost of having the water so there is a capital cost there is an operation cost and um, and at the end you have to design and look to the big picture of the, of, of the whole process to achieve your goal. Oh, so we just mean that uh, in the hybrid uh, technology, we need the more huge energy. We need more huge energy or something like that for it's the high. Not necessary. Mm -hmm. Not necessary that you need the high uh, energy. For example, in a um, in revived project that we are uh, running almost finishing. We used in the uh, electrodialysis in front of the arc and we were able to lower the energy consumption, uh, specific energy consumption uh, from four, five uh, kilowatt hour per cube of water uh, from seawater down to 1.5, 1.8 kilowatt hour per cube. So actually by combining ED and RO together in one system, we were able to lower the energy consumption. Oh, okay. So uh, from your uh, lecture, is that applicable in Indonesia, I think? Is that right? Is that applicable in Indonesia? C, something like that? It's um, possible to and applicable in everywhere because uh, in the end it's um, let's say it's a system that it can uh, be tuned to your right um, um, uh, target. So uh, from capacity, uh, so uh, the, the industrial scale of electrodialysis in Fuji foam can produce around one one module. We call it one module can produce up to thirty one per hour and and it can be scaled up to thousands no problem and uh, in term of um, quality then also you can tune it based on the um, current that you apply inside the system and it's uh, applicable everywhere in the world uh, such system depends on uh, of course the the capital cost that and an investment that you have to put in uh, such system. Oh, okay. So it's very applicable. So, so there is no question anymore. And then uh, I would like to say thank you, Dr. Abdul Salam, for the interesting discussion. If you have uh, any conclusion, you can say 
uh, any conclusion right now? Um, basically, I think the interaction between industry and uh, university is very important. Uh, it's, it's, it has a big benefit for both sides because uh, it's, it's the right, uh, let's say, uh, combination. Uh, brains uh, like uh, generated in the university and also hands uh, gener uh, available in the industry works always together uh, for the best for the uh, world. Um, in the end, I would like to thank you for this opportunity, and I am very glad, very happy to contribute. Uh, it's, it's a bit small contribution, but uh, I hope next time will be uh, better. Okay. So, thank you, Dr. Abdul Salam al Hadidi, for the interesting conclusion and discussion for today's lecture. That's all our lecture today. Uh, that I can conclude today is uh, advanced clean water technology for sustainable production, especially for agricultural production with bio-based uh, material uh, is from Dr. Yusuf Ibisono and membrane for desalination and distillation process. There are many limitation, detail, improvement and alternative for the silt density index or SDI, especially for collaboration with the industry from Dr. Abdul Salam, Abdul Salam Al Hadidi. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I, uh, I apologize if there are any mistake and problem and difficult uh, technical uh, connection, I think for Dr. Abdul Salam and uh, everyone uh, so wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh we return to the master ceremony up is time is yours thank you thank you that was a very enlightening lecture thank you dr yusuf Bibisono and dr abdul salam al hadidi for the shared knowledge and insight and thank you mrs tina for creating the lecture finally we have come to our last agenda of the day this is the closing ceremony Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite you to turn on your camera because we are will take a photo session. I will count from one until three and give your best smile. Okay, get ready. One, two, three. Cheers. Okay, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind you to fill the post attendee that has been sent by committee in Zoom and YouTube room chat to get your international A certificate. And now I would like to resume our guest lecture today. And thank you to all participants that joined us today. We are very honored to have you with us this afternoon. Now I would leave you with a quote by Stewart Brand, an author and innovative thinker who once said, we can see the past but not influence it. We can influence the future but not see it. Let us all be guided by all the things we have learned and listened throughout the lecture and hopefully we will be able to apply them in it for our future. Thank you, thank you, and thank you very much. Will we meet again, hopefully, in a direct event or perhaps in the next guest lecture? I wish all of you to have a good day and stay healthy. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Salam. Okay, thank you very much, Doctor. Materi nanti di-share dengan sertifikat ya. Iya, Pak. Oke, okay, ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, terima, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Mohon maaf.